you entrust a man with a public trust, and you know that he's human, and you don't want him to run amok, you bind him down with an oath. I know we heard talk today about someday you may see those in the uniform, in violation of their oaths, pointing the gun at you, their masters, in an unlawful way. I pray that never happens. It has happened. I want to assure you, the man in the uniform will not be I. Law enforcement and military are not the enemy. There's a lot of people that think, oh God, we're gonna have to fight the US forces. We're gonna have to fight the Marines. We're gonna have to fight the army. And that's not, not the case. US military is not against the people. We are the people. Today, really, in many respects, our government is the one that is stepping aside the rule of law. Gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. The social controllers are very scared of police and military rediscovering their oath of office. I will not obey orders to impose martial law. I will not obey. They understand that throughout history, tyranny comes to your door in a uniform. We will not obey orders to conduct warrantless searches of the American people. I will not obey. Think of every instance you can think in history where republics have fallen through usurpation of power. Particularly think of the times when it has happened through the military force run amok. You can't really tell from my name, but my father uh, lived, uh, lived under Stalin, and his whole family was killed by Stalin. And my mother's a family escaped from uh, North Korea, and they lost all their property and were supposed to be killed at least three or four times. So I was fortunate to be uh, born in this great nation, and, uh, but yet I see the same uh, signs or our country going in uh, the direction in which my parents escaped from. U.S. troops also arrived, something far easier to do even now thanks to last year's elimination of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. That forbid U.S. troops from policing on American soil. We will not obey any orders to force American citizens into any form of detention camps under any pretext. I will not obey. To what degree are we anymore uh, mindful of oaths? If we had law enforcement in America keeping their oath to do just that, we would have our constitutional republic back tomorrow. That's how powerful this movement is. I'm Garrett Lear, the Patriot Pastor. This is where the battle was fought, right here in the Lexington Battle Green. This is sacred ground. This is one of the most important pieces of real estate in the history of America. This is where it happened, and this was the shot basically heard around the world, and still being heard around the world, I think. I grew up in the town of Lexington, standing on the green, playing on the green, when I was a boy growing up, my mother told me about our ancestry. And so I started to go on the village green in Lexington, but didn't pay a whole lot of attention except to the statue of John Parker. Everyone could look up to him because he wasn't white, he wasn't brown, he wasn't red, he wasn't yellow, he wasn't black. He's green, actually. <laughs> so anyone could identify with him. And I said, one day when I grow up, I want to be like him. Welcome to Lexington, the cradle of American liberty. Most people don't know really what happened at the Battle of Lexington, but basically what happened was the night before the battle, that would have been April 18th, riders came in, you know, that's the midnight ride of Paul Revere. It was actually John Dawes that did it, and a man named Prescott, because Paul Revere was interdicted by the British troops. But they were bringing a message from Dr. Warren and the committees of correspondence and the committees of safety in Boston to tell them looks like the British uh, are mounted troops here and uh, we're not exactly sure what they're trying to do. They're probably going to go after the munitions that are in Concord, but they're probably going to try to capture Samuel Adams and John Hancock and either send them back to England in chains or shoot them right there or something. And basically when the British came it was obvious that they had some bad plan. The Minutemen, the militia, the regulated militia, did not want to engage the British troops in a fight. And so these men stood their ground when they were told, you are to drop your weapons and disband. Well, they started to disband, but they would not drop their weapons because they were militia. And what happened when they started to disband, they got fired on. The first shot that was fired was fired by the British regulars. It was not fired by the Minutemen, it was not fired by the colonists, it was not fired by the people of Lexington. 
and we can find that in the uh, narrative of, of Jonas Clark, the pastor. Eight of them got shot and killed. Many were bayoneted. Some died later of uh, wounds. Many were wounded. But eight died on this green. But they stopped the British as they were on their march to Concord. And they did what was right. This was a principled stand for freedom, and we're doing the same thing today. We will not obey orders to disarm the American people. I will not obey. Well, today we're here on the green at Lexington, April 19th, which is the anniversary of April 19th, 1775, which was the first shot and fire of the American Revolution. I'm Stuart Rhodes, the founder of Oath Keepers, which is a nonpartisan association of current serving military, uh, police, and veterans, all of us who swore an oath to defend the Constitution, and our mission is to make sure that all of the other oath takers are oath keepers. Gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. U.S. troops also arrived, something far easier to do even now thanks to last year's elimination of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. That forbid U.S. troops from policing on American soil. 